What's up? My name's Levi from Creekside Interactive, and today we're going to look at a few Blender tools that you'll need uh, to create the turret that we're going to be working on. So, in Paper Planes, we have quite a few enemies, but uh, I thought maybe it'd be fun to make a turret that kind of reminded me of, you know, when I was a kid or playing around with toys and stuff. So I'm actually looking at maybe a golf ball turret or a golf ball gun. In order to get everything together, we're going to use a couple of tools that maybe you're familiar with or maybe not. Uh, in this particular video, if you already are really familiar with Blender, then you're not going to need this. But uh, I'm going to go through just, just a couple of the basics. So pretty much the first thing, uh, we're not going to need any rendering tools. We're not going to need any lights or any cameras. So we're just going to get rid of those so they're out of the way. We're going to go ahead and design everything here in Blender. And we're going to do all of our texturing and everything in Substance Painter. So we really don't need any texturing tools, anything of that nature. Pretty much just all of the modeling and UV editing tools. So the first thing we're going to talk about is just the window setup. So we have object mode right now, you can see right here. And I can drop it down, you get more stuff. If I actually select an object and drop it, you'll get a lot more tabs that you can open. We're pretty much just going to be focusing on the object mode and the edit mode, which you can also push tab to go into each of those. Object mode uh, is just basically selecting the objects that you want to work on or tab into edit. So if I were to duplicate the box a few times, and I'm just duplicating with shift D. And also if you look right over here, you can see which buttons I'm pushing. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't translate all of the buttons, but for the most part, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So in object mode, we can select the boxes that we want to work on. And then we can tab into that particular box and work on just that one. We can tab out and we can select another one, tab in, tab out. Let's go ahead and delete those. So if I select this middle box here, and we tab in, you can see here in the middle we have the origin point. The origin point is very important for doing a turret because the turret will consist of a few models connected together by the origin point, which they will have to rotate around. So we want to make sure that the origin point is always where we need it. So if I'm in object mode and I move my cube around, which I'm just pushing G, G for grab, and I move it around, you can see that the origin point goes with the cube. And we don't want that, so what we're going to do is tab into edit mode. Now if I move the box, the origin point will still stay in the center where I want it, and everything we make will translate around that origin point. So let's go ahead and move that back. One of our main features is just working with vertices, we have the points for our vertices, we can edit each vertice independently. We also have the edge selection. We can edit each one of the edges independently. And we have our face tool, and we can edit the face as well. And you can shift select multiple faces, as you can also shift select multiple vertices or edges to get as many as you need. Let's go ahead and undo that. Another good feature that we're gonna be using quite a bit is hiding. So when you're in edit mode and you select a face, you can push H to hide and then you can work inside and do any edits you may need. And then to unhide, all you have to do is Alt H to unhide any selection that you have. Also, if you're in object mode and say you have several objects and your scene's getting kind of cluttered and you can't tell what's going on, you can select the item you want to work on and push forward slash. You can hide all the other objects and it'll zoom into the one you're going to work on. You push forward slash again to bring them all back, select another object, forward slash. The forward slash is the one right next to the shift. 
and it will zoom you in and hide all the other objects. When you're done working on it, you can forward slash again and bring them all back. Let's go ahead and delete all of those. So a lot of the editing tools we're going to be using. So if we tab into edit mode, we're going to be extruding a lot. So if you grab any point and push G to move it around, you can push E to extrude out a single point. Or you can go into your edges, grab an edge and you can extrude out a whole edge. Or likewise, you can grab a face and extrude an entire region. Like so. And that will give you the geometry you need to make all your blocking and pretty much anything you want. So let's go ahead and delete all of those. Another tool we're going to be using quite often is going to be the beveling tool. In the beveling tool, all you do is grab the edges that you want to bevel. Okay. Push control B and you'll start your beveling. And if you roll your mouse wheel up and down, you will get more geometry and make it more round or less. Another tool we'll be using a lot is the loop cut. So if you push control R, you'll get a little yellow icon that lets you know where you're going to cut your loop. If you click down once, it'll finalize it and ask you where you want to put it. And in this instance, we just want it in the middle. So we're going to right click to cancel and then that'll put the loop cut in the middle. So if we go up here on the top bar right here, we're going to see the X-ray tool. If we push the x-ray tool, we can see the loop cut all the way through and what's behind it. So we can select items behind, which here they're hidden. Here we can select them. And we're actually going to press one, excuse me, we're going to push three on our numpad to go into side view. And we're going to go to vertice select. We're going to hold down on the left mouse button and select all of these vertices, just like that. We're going to push X and we're going to delete the vertices. So now if we go back into three, we have only half a box. So if we go into our modifiers, we have our whole modifier stack here. Pretty much the only one we're going to be messing with mostly is just going to be the mirror. And then we can mirror along the Y. So now everything that's on the other side of the Y is going to have a mirrored image of what's on this side. So if I move this, we're going to have a translation between the two. Also, if I loop cut one more time, cancel that so it's in the middle, delete the bottom vertices, we can go on the Z. So we can mirror along the Z as well. And now when we move a single point, it will translate on the Y and the Z axis. We could actually go further and cut it in the middle one more time and have a complete cube that's mirrored, but we're not going to do that for right now. So we're going to go ahead and go back, get our box back. Tool I like to use a lot is I like to actually use the widget for moving and stuff. It just, that's my preference. Another thing we're going to be doing a lot. So if we push seven to go to the top view, so the views are one, we're going to go to the front. Three is a side view and seven is a top view. And then two, four, six, and five are going to go incrementally between the views. Uh, excuse me. Five is actually going, I believe orthographic to perspective. So we're going to go back up to the top. One of the tools we're going to be using quite a bit is the spin tool. So as I was talking about earlier, we have this middle origin point. And when we're in edit mode, we can move the box around and leave the origin point in its place. So we're going to move the box down. We'll go ahead and get the spin tool and start our spin. We can open the spin tab. We can put the spin to three. 
and go 360 degrees. And we're going to duplicate. So now we have three boxes all rotated around the center origin. And I didn't select the entire box, so unfortunately I only duplicated some of it. Let's just go ahead and do that again. Grab the whole thing, spin it, go 360. Select, use duplicates. Now we have all three. And we have here where we first started, since I did 360 degrees, it put another box on top of the box that was there. You can't really see it, but if I grab it, you can see that there's a duplicate. So there's a couple ways to get rid of that. If you remember to do it right now, you can just delete it by pressing X, go to vertices, delete, or you can select both boxes. So now I have both boxes selected, press M and go to by distance. This will merge all of the vertices. It'll say it how many it merged. And now we only have one box. So let's go ahead and look at some of the constraints. So we're going to be moving and scaling a lot. And let's go ahead and just go back. Let's back, 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 back. Get one cube. All right, so we have our cube here. So if you press A, you'll select all. Double press A, select nothing. So we're going to select all. If you press S for scale, it's going to scale it up. R for rotate, it will rotate. And G for grab, we've already used that. That'll grab it and move it around. And you can also rotate, scale, and grab on constrained axes. So if I want to rotate, say I want to rotate only on the Y, I'll press Y, and now I'm rotating on the Y. If I want to rotate, say on the Z, I will only rotate on the Z. And if I scale, I can do the same thing. So if I want to scale only on the X, I'll press X. I can also constrain to two. So if I press X and I press shift Z, then it will take the Z axis out and I'm only scaling on the X and the Y. Or I can push S and I can push shift Y. Now I'm on the X and the Z. And that should get us started pretty much for everything that we're gonna be doing. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of spinning, scaling, rotating, that's just standard. And we're going to be keeping an eye on this origin point, because anything else that uh, gets stacked on top of it in Unreal is going to use that origin point to put it where it needs to go. And also, that's your rotation point, so we'll rotate around that. So if we have another cube here, we put it up on top here and it's using the same origin point when we add the cube if these are two separate objects all right so if i actually i'm going to push p and separate this object so now it's no longer part of this edit now it's two separate objects but the objects share the same origin point so whenever we put one object in unreal it'll have this origin point and then we add the object on top of it, it'll use the same one and it'll put it in its right place. But when we rotate it, it will rotate around that point. So that's going to be our turret. So this one uh, pretty much takes care of the tools that we're going to be using. In the next uh, video, we're going to go ahead and start working on the turret base and get that all fleshed out. And that's fairly simple. So there'll be a lot more explanation, maybe some of the things that I've missed. And we'll go much more in depth in the modeling process and getting everything set up there. And then once we get done with all the parts, then we'll put them into Substance Painter. And in Substance Painter, we'll go ahead and put in all the texturing, bump maps, all that stuff. And then we'll go ahead and throw it into Unreal after that, into the actual game, Paper Planes, get all the logic set up, get all the blueprinting set up, make sure it's working, make sure the airplanes can kill it, make sure it can kill the airplanes, then it counts as a point. And then from there, we'll go ahead and maybe make some airplanes afterwards and just do a few series on complete beginning to end, putting it into Unreal, making it work, making everything function, and getting it all set up. Thank you very much for watching this, and I'll see you on the next one.